Hello and welcome to part nine of Themes from Orot HaTshuva of Rav Avram Yitzchak HaKohen Cook. Our learning will be dedicated to the Rafu Shalema of Shimona Bas Daniela. The Gemara tells us in Brachos that they deposed Rav Gamliel from the Nesios. They took Rav Gamliel away from being the Nasi. And the reason was because Rav Gamliel was deemed too harsh. His approach was too exclusionary. Rav Gamliel believed that certain people shouldn't have access to the Torah at the highest levels because they weren't pure of heart, because they weren't what's called tocho kibaro. Their insides weren't who they presented themselves to be on the outside. And so the Chazal replaced him with the philosophy that the base medrash ought to be open, open to all those who are seeking to learn and be inspired. At the heart of this debate really is another idea, another, another debate that exists in the Chazal. According to Rav Gamliel, the idea, ki yetzer lev ha'adam, ra minu rav, as the Pasuk says in, in Bracious, that man was created fundamentally corrupt in the beginning. In other words, the moment you are born, you have the Yetzirah. The moment you're born, your desires to do things that are a keneged, that are against the Ratzon Hashem, the will of Hashem, is so strong. The other approach, however, is that basically man is created fundamentally good, holy. Yashrus hativit shel hanefesh. The soul is yashar. Jewish neshama is holy, is longing for good things, for pure things. And it's only after being introduced to the forces of the Yetzirah that we decide to corrupt, that we decide to change our values, that we decide that we're not going to be as pure as we were designed initially. This dispute is a fundamental dispute that not only exists within Judaism, but actually is a difference, a fundamental difference between Judaism and Christianity. In Christianity, according to the Augustinian view, the person is born corrupted because of the idea of original sin. According to Rav Kook, nothing could be further from the truth. We are born pure. And sometimes throughout life, we taint our soul, we taint our neshama with all sorts of decisions, all sorts of influences. They come from people, they come from a distorted worldview, they come from internal desires to push back and forth. But in essence, our, our inner soul is longing to do the right thing is longing to do what is proper in the eyes of Hashem, what is proper in the eyes of Torah. And for this reason, when we do the right thing, we feel gratified, we feel good about ourselves. Why is it that it feels good? It's not just because someone compliments you, it's not just because you get praised and, 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 and honored at a dinner, or because someone tells you, good job, puts a sticker on your paper and says, Mitsuyan. The reason we feel good when we do that which is righteous and holy is because we are aligning our actions with our neshama. We are aligning our actions with the very person we're supposed to be and we were designed to be in the beginning. And it's only after the fact that corrupt values begin to seep in little by little. And so when a person engages in tshuva, in turning around their life, even in the slightest turn, the slightest bit, what happens is we start to feel connected. All the parts of our lives and all of the people we know and all of the institutions that we deal with, everything feels like it's happening. It's coming together. It feels like, like, like we're, we're on track again. Things are finally coming together. And when we corrupt those values, when we run away from who we are, everything else is wrong. You go to shul, ah, this one spoke for too long. This person doesn't like me. This one sat in my seat. You go to the school to, pick, to drop off the kids, and they don't like the way they do carpool, and the teacher is not really interested in my, my child. And you meet this person. This person has business intentions that are not in my best interest, and this one's out to get me. That one's out to get me. I can't get along with my wife. I can't get along with my husband. All this happens because the barometer internally is, it has been corrupted by an external force. But when we start to align our values with the proper ways, the proper mythos, and we work on becoming the person that we were designed initially in utero to be, at that moment, when we become that person that we started out to, all of a sudden everything clicks. All of a sudden the schools are wonderful, the schools are wonderful, our neighbors are great, our spouse is beautiful and perfect, and they do a great job, and they, and they care for me whether they do the dishes or not, and whether they're, whether they're engaged in the things I'm interested in engaged or not. All of a sudden everything's clicking because the world is corrected, because the world is made proper again. Rav Kook writes in Orota, Orota Torah and Perk Mleim Anu Regesh Musr. We are filled with a basic emotion of proper and just and upright conduct. Kmeim Anu Liyot Chaim Chayetohor. 
We are trying, we are supposed to be living a life of purity. Our thoughts, our imaginations, our, our values, our inner desires are steering our hearts to create an image, a picture of that which is idyllic, of that which is ideal, and that which is perfect. We want purity internally. We want that which is perfect. The inner desire We want to be on the inside. Tahor, pure, and kadosh. Everything in our life, everything we do, everything we encounter is screaming at us, is calling out to us. Go back to the person you're supposed to be. Go back to that pure, ideal state. That's the inner she'ifot, the inner chukos, the inner desire of who we are supposed to be and we're getting back to. And this was at the heart of the debate between the Gamliel and Chachamim. Is man fundamentally good? Should he have access to the base matter? Should he have access to Kedusha because he's yearning for that? Or is he off the path and therefore first has to restore that which is corrupted before having access to the purity? I think Rav Cook's vision entitles everyone that access because that's really where we are. No matter where we're holding, we have the she'ifos, we have the yearnings to be the pure person that we were designed to be initially.